I will go to him. If you go to him, you cannot come back to me. Hello again, my friends. Thanks for joining me for another video. And if this is your first time here, a very warm welcome. Before we get started, please kindly take a moment right now and click that subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified of every time I upload a new video. And also please watch this video to the end to see the preview trailer and some behind the scenes photos. I pray thee, strengthen me, O oh God. And if you haven't seen this movie, please know there will be some spoilers in this video. Samson and Delilah is a drama, family, and history movie. It was released in the USA in 1949, and it stars Hedy Lamarr and Victor Mature. It was directed by Cecil B. DeMille, and it won two Oscars. And some of their co-stars were George Sanders, Angela Lansbury, and others. The movie is about when strong man Samson rejects the love of the beautiful Philistine woman Delilah. She seeks vengeance that brings horrible consequences they both regret. And now for some behind the scenes trivia and tidbits. This movie was in post-production when Sunset Boulevard in 1950 was being shot at Paramount Pictures. In a scene where Gloria Swanson's character, Norma Desmond, visits a Paramount soundstage to see producer and director Cecil B. DeMille, the set of Delilah's tent in the Valley of Sorek was reassembled to show the director working. Henry Wilcoxon, Julia Fay, and others in costumes were seen shaking hands with Norma Desmond. And Cecil B. DeMille wanted to shoot the background scenes in Israel where the story took place, but couldn't because of the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. He eventually decided to send a camera crew on a trip to North Africa that lasted two months. The crew brought back film footage shot in 20 towns and cities in Morocco and Algeria from Casablanca to Algiers, as well as suitable props for his movie. And amongst producer and director Cecil B. DeMille's most serious candidates for the role of Delilah were Gene Simmons, Lana Turner, and Rita Hayworth. In the case of the latter two, their respective studios, MGM and Columbia Pictures, refused to loan them to Paramount Pictures. According to a June 30, 1948 Variety article, Simmons did want to play the role, but J. Arthur Rank, to who she was under contract, refused to sanction the deal for her to work with DeMille. And according to a 1948 Modern Screen article, James Mason, after hearing that he was being considered for the title role of this movie, told the press he would play Samson for DeMille if Paramount paid him $250,000. And Steve Reeves was also considered and Cecil B. DeMille lobbied long and hard to get Paramount Pictures to pick up Reeves, but DeMille and the studio wanted Reeves to tone down his physique, which Reeves, still young and new to the industry, ultimately refused to do. But also a false story has circulated that George Reeves auditioned for the role of Samson in this movie, but lost the role to Victor Mature. Reeves was never under consideration for the role of Samson. However, he was given a role as the wounded messenger at the recommendation of Mature, who was very loyal to his friends from his student days at the Pasadena Community Playhouse. Many of the smaller roles in the movie were also played by Mature's friends from Pasadena, California. And according to Scott Amon's biography of Cecil B. DeMille, 
the real reason that Burt Lancaster did not get the role of Samson was due to his politics. Lancaster being a liberal, while DeMille was a conservative, as well as Victor Mature, who ultimately got the role. And according to the biography, The Presidents and the Preacher, Cecil B. DeMille originally offered the role of Samson to a young Billy Graham, who was experiencing national fame as an evangelist. Graham turned the offer down, telling DeMille that he had no ambitions beyond his calling to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. DeMille told Graham that he'd be certain that the young evangelist would refuse the offer, but by actually doing so, Graham had restored DeMille's faith. And Vincent Price was almost cast as the Saran. Despite not landing the role, DeMille liked his audition so much that he cast Price for the paralleling support role of Baca in his next biblical epic, The Ten Commandments in 1956. And George Sanders was paid $100,000 for his role as the Saran, roughly $1.2 million dollars adjusted for inflation as of 2022 and it took two tries to bring down the temple of Dagon in the climatic sequence during the first try some of the dynamite charges in the miniature temple failed to go off on schedule the temple, about one-third full size, had to be rebuilt, and the second attempt was more successful. Footage from both tries can be seen in the completed movie. When the statue of Dagan starts to fall, there is a cut to the Saran of Gaza, who's played by George Sanders, saying, Delilah. Then a cut back to a long shot of the statue hitting the ground, but at a slightly different angle from that of the previous shot. And during the temple destruction sequence, Henry Wilcoxon was struck by a falling column and approached producer and director Cecil B. DeMille with blood streaming down his face. And according to biographer Charles Higman, DeMille remarked, Good God, Harry, you look terrible. You're going to hold up production. Wilcoxon sarcastically replied, Well, I wouldn't be the first actor to be destroyed by a column. And the temple scene was shot in eight days with 600 extras. The enormous set occupied two Paramount sound stages, 14 and 15. And though cast as Hedy Lamarr's older sister, Dame Angela Lansbury was 10 years younger than Lamarr. And Semidar, the name of Dame Angela Lansbury character, is the Hebrew word for blossom. And Maria Montez and Yvonne De Carlo, who later starred in Cecil B. DeMille's The Ten Commandments in 1956, wanted to play the role of Delilah and were very upset when they found out DeMille chose Hedy Lamarr for the role. And Hedy Lamarr considered this her personal favorite amongst her movies and her best performance. Christopher Young, one of her biographers, wrote, Her performance was definitely the main asset of the film, one for which she deserved an Academy Award nomination. And inspired by the success of this movie, Hedy Lamarr accepted to play the title role in the British production, The Story of Esther. Glenn Ford was considered for the role of Assyrius, and the movie was never realized, though. In 1939, Cecil B. DeMille considered Lamarr to play the beautiful biblical queen, 
with Robert Morley as Mordecai in a project that, like Lamar's, was also never realized. And Hedy Lamar wore a total of 10 costumes in this movie. And Delilah's peacock gown and cape included 2,000 gilded peacock feathers. It took 12 women three weeks to finish the costume. And Hedy Lamar celebrated her 34th birthday, which was November 9th of 1948, on the set of this movie. A publicity photograph captured the moment when Lamar cuts her birthday cake on the set. To her left was Cecil B. DeMille and to her right, Victor Mature. The photograph's caption reads, Hedy Lamar as Delilah may give her heart to Victor or Samson Mature in the picture, but the first slice of Hetty's birthday cake went to that charmer, Cecil B. DeMille. And Victor Mature won the role of Swanson over Burt Lancaster, like I said previously, who was dealing with a back injury and was considered too young. Henry Wilkinson was considered but thought to be too old. And Victor Mature was supposed to fight the lion himself, but he managed to convince Cecil B. DeMille to use a stunt double, K. Bell, instead. I had no love for the lion, Mature told Movieland magazine, and he wasn't carrying any torch for me. In the scene in which I was supposed to be stalking him, Cecil DeMille kept urging me to get closer, and I was calling out, nice kitty, nice kitty, didn't do any good. The lion cast an unaffectionate eye upon me, and for a moment, it looked like a question of who would jump first, me or the lion. The cameraman seeing the situation yelled, if he jumps, Vic, Try to keep yourself properly lighted for the shot. The stuntman finally tackled the lion. And for the scene in which Samson kills the lion, Victor Mature refused to wrestle a tame movie lion. Told by producer and director Cecil B. DeMille that the lion had no teeth, Mature replied, I don't want to be gummed to death either. The scene shows a stuntman wrestling the tame lion, intercut with close-ups of Mature wrestling a lion skin. And Hedy Lamar's mother, Mrs. Gertrude Keisler, visited the set of the scene where Sanson and Delilah encounter the lion. In a publicity photograph, Victor Mature is seen sitting on the soundstage floor between chairs that seat Lamar and her mother, Mrs. Keisler, who caressed his hair. And much discussion took place during the shoot of the scene where Samson kisses Delilah as to whether a man kisses a woman with his eyes closed or open. Victor Mature insisted that a fellow would be a chump to close his eyes when kissing Hedy Lamar. In the final shot, Mature closed, opened, and then closed his eyes again. And according to his 1959 autobiography, Groucho and Me, Groucho Marx was invited to a special screening of this movie and a Paramount Pictures executive asked him if he liked it. Groucho replied, well... There's just one glaring fault. No picture can hold my interest where the leading man's bust is larger than the leading lady's. And with a $28 million gross domestically, this was Paramount Pictures' biggest hit since the Ten Commandments in 1923. And according to the Guinness Book of World Records, 
this movie was the top money maker of 1950 in the US and Canada. And more than a decade later, Paramount Pictures re-released this movie to cash in on the popularity of the Italian-produced sword and sandal mythological muscle man movies that had become the rage internationally. And now if you enjoyed my work and would like to show your appreciation in the form of a donation to help my channel grow, please buy me a coffee for just a small amount by clicking on the link below in the description area down below. Thanks in advance. Colossal drama of the mightiest colossus that ever lived, Samson and Delilah. The immortal story of the strongest man in all history. Masterpiece of big screen entertainment. Samson, who alone and unafraid challenged and defeated the most dreaded army of his time. His daring exploits have become legend. This time you must have done something really terrible. Miriam, you're further above me than the moon. But not as hard to reach. Only stretch out your hand. I don't want to hurt you, Mary. You're like a sparrow, so gentle and... That's a very gentle way of telling me that you're in love with someone else. You always see through people as if they were cobwebs. I hear you saw a woman in tin now. Yes. I can't forget her. It is the same with me. I can't forget you. The lion of the desert, he fought with his bare hand. Would you have us believe the beast dropped dead from fear? The girl told you the truth. What you believe is your affair. I should like to see this strength. Come, Miss Carr. Now you'll see some fur fly. You'll see some blood flow. Break this boaster's bones. I have no quarrel with your warrior. 
What kind of courage claims to face a lion and fears my wrestler? The man has done me no harm. Fight him, Saracen. Fight him. Like all boasters, he's a coward. Garmishka, mm -hmm. yeah, right. let him feel the whip. Hunter's prize is yours. One ring for two lions. I would like to name my own prize. Oh. What would you have? My throne? <laughs> I would take a Philistine bride. Oh, the girl seems willing enough. I need men like you. If it takes a pretty face to bind you to me, your request is granted. Choose your bride. This is the woman I take. But Semidar's promised to me. I've given my word, Artur. She's yours, and a hundred pieces of silver. You've given me a great treasure. Will you accept from me the skin of the lion with no mark upon it? As a peace offering from one prince to another. Is it wise to have this mad dog in our city? Uh, he might be tamed in our city. Lord Sarai. Samson could make no trouble if... Uh... Arturo brought 30 of his warriors to the wedding feast. <laughs> you, this girl has the wisdom of a serpent. Ride home together and discuss the choice of wedding companion. Samson, you would not bring this shame upon us. There's no shame in marriage, father. To a Philistine woman? Or Semidor? Oh, wait, wait, Samson. Or is my wife? But she's not your wife. I thought you hated her, so I gave her to your companion, Arturo. I other her. Take her. Oh, she'll make you a much better wife. You're the only thing in the world I want. And you want me to marry this wildcat? See as he saw the orgies of barbaric pagans that roused his vengeful fury. But Samson was ensnared by the seductive beauty of Delilah. Daughter of hell. His lust became a trap that led to his downfall and capture. The lion of down is torn like a sheep. A lion? A man? A queen is a new bone queen. You must have used the sickle on it. in the big bristles. Delilah's plucked him like a chicken. I've taken away your strength, Samson. Your little Danite sparrow will nest alone. You felicity gutter rat. It was you who betrayed him, not I. He was captive, in chains. Yet the lord of the five cities could not show him mercy. Did you show him mercy, Delilah? You wanted vengeance. You had it. And chained, he was tortured and blinded. Here is the most spectacular scene of destruction ever filmed. Samson using his incredible strength to bring down the Temple of Dagon in crashing ruins. It takes all my life. I'll make him curse the day he was born. 
this Samson has some unknown power, some some secret that gives him superhuman strength. No man can stand against him. Perhaps he'll fall before a woman. Even Samson's strength must have a weakness. There isn't a man in the world who will not share his secret with some woman. My strength is... No, Samson, no. I don't want to be armed with a weapon to destroy him. I cannot fight against his God. But no woman will take him from me. I have seen it. My eyes have seen thy glory, O oh God. like they wear. Cause this guy says I'm a natural. If you like that one, we've got a lot more. Hotter than your morning coffee. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you come back to see the next one. I'll be here waiting for you. If you enjoyed this, please kindly give me a like, share with others, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget you need to click on that notification bell so that you can be notified of every time I upload a new one. So thank you so very much for stopping by again and sharing this moment with me and this time that always passes by so quickly. I can't wait to do the next one for you. So until we meet again, please be safe and be blessed. <laughs>